You could last buy a new film for this camera decades ago, but the cartridge in front of us was made last week. What's going on? Keep watching to find out. Hi, my name's Jenny List, and it's time for another exciting instalment of What's on Jenny's Bench. In the early 1960s, the folks at Kodak were developing an easy-to-load snapshot camera with a new film system, because roll films were seen as cumbersome and difficult to load. What they came up with was this, the Kodak Instamatic with its all-new 126 film cartridge. This put 24 square frames on 35mm film in a simple drop-in cartridge, and with Kodak's marketing, it became a huge success. Over in Germany, meanwhile, their competitor Agfa had to come up with a response, and they did so by revamping their Carrot film cartridge from a few decades earlier. They gave it a metal tab to select ISO value and called it the Rapid cartridge. It's a metal cylinder superficially similar to a 135 cartridge, but without the spool. Instead, a roll of standard 35mm film is coiled up inside it, and rather than being wound back into the cartridge for removal from the camera as a 135 film is, the film feeds into another identical rapid cartridge on the opposite side of the camera. The rapid name comes from loading a camera being as simple as dropping a film into the camera and letting the sprocket carry it forward automatically into the other cartridge. Because of this operation, all rapid cameras have a metal pressure plate to keep the film in place, something Agfa's publicity people used in their adverts to take a shot at Kodak's 126 cartridge, which didn't have one. If there was a disadvantage in the rapid system, it was that a cartridge could only hold enough film for 16 exposures before the friction became too great, so it couldn't compete with 126's 24 exposures. It seems this was the view of the general public because the format never really took off, and by the end of the 60s, Agfa had thrown in the towel and were also making the Agfamatic range of 126 snapshot cameras. Fast forward to 2023, and I found my Rapid 1F in a second-hand store. Naturally, I wanted to play with it, but by its very nature, I only had one cartridge. Time to fire up OpenSCAD and make my own. I started with a solid model of the cartridge using measurements of the real one and then carved all the way through some space for the rolled up film and its path out to the camera. I added a couple of rings on the inside to reduce friction and then formed a couple of end caps with an internal rim for light tightness. The whole thing is designed for printing without supports and can be found in the usual places linked below this video. As printed, it's missing the two strips of felt that form the light seal where the film comes out. I needed to cut two pieces of felt and glue them in place, and since I didn't have any black felt handy, I used strips cut from the soft side of Velcro fastener. With the strips glued into place, I left them with a knife blade in the gap while the glue cured, and then trimmed their ends flat. I could then stick on the end caps and leave the cartridge overnight to let any glue solvent dissipate. Filling the cartridge from a 135 cartridge is fairly easy in the dark. I cut the end of the film strip straight across and then rounded off the corner, then gently fed it between the felt strips into the cartridge. The film coiled itself easily and it was obvious when it was full and would take no more. It took about half of the expired 24 exposures film I gave it, which turned out to be a little more than required. In theory, I could just drop the film in the camera and use the film advance to load it, but in practice, I hand-fed the end of the film into the take-up cartridge and loaded the two together into the camera. It was then time to take the camera out and snap a few pictures. It managed 11 frames rather than the expected 12 before the film would advance no more, possibly a function of my feeding the film into the take-up at the start and using a frame's worth of space. The results, as you can see, are underwhelming, but that's entirely a product of using the long-expired colour film I had to hand and developing it myself using black and white chemistry. I'm still happy with my cartridge, though, and we'll give it another try with a new black and white film to get better pictures. Yeah. So that's my little diversion into Agfa Country, another extinct film format brought back to life. I don't have a sponsor for my videos. But as before, I'd like to take this moment to talk about something else I'm involved with away from my career writing about tech. I am a board member of a small non-profit called Trans Rescue. We get trans people like me out of dodgy and dangerous places around the world. I'd like you to go to our website, read our blog and see what we're up to. And if you can, 
help us in our work. Thanks very much and thank you for watching this video.